Good evening, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started with our Wednesday night service with a few songs. So let's all join together in a few songs of praise tonight. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. promises that cannot fail when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail by the living word of god i shall prevail standing on the promises of god standing 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 on the promises of god my savior standing standing I'm standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound to him eternally by love's strong cord, overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises, I cannot fall. Listening every moment to the Spirit's call. Resting in my Savior as my all in all. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we come to you this evening, and we just want to thank you for another Wednesday that you give us to come together and to study your word, to sing some songs, to just praise your name and to worship you tonight. We just want to pray for everyone here in this room that as we continue through our lives this week, just help us to honor and glorify you with everything that you do, everything that we do for you, and help us to share the gospel to those around us, help us to be a light in our communities and in our world. just want to thank you for everything that you do for us, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray all of these things. Amen.
lift your name on high. I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and upstairs. Amen. Let's pray together tonight. Father, we thank you again for a wonderful day that you have given us. It uh, has been a busy day for some, and uh, we come now at the end of that day, and end of this day, and we just ask you now just to fill our hearts with uh, your word and give us the encouragement we need tonight. And as we come together to pray, uh, Lord, we pray for the needs of those in our church family. We pray for the needs of uh, all those that are around us tonight, this nation, uh, the world. We come tonight, Lord, bringing those concerns to you. Uh, Lord, we pray for our youth tonight as they gather. Uh, we pray uh, a blessing upon Blake as he leads them in their time together. Lord, we pray for our children down the hall as they meet tonight. Lord, you be with the teachers and be with those children that are there, that are there tonight. Now we pray your blessing on us as we open your word together and uh, spend some time there tonight. We ask those things in Jesus' name. Amen. Have your Bible. We're going to be uh, a little bit long in reading tonight. I'm going to be reading about 30 verses, uh, and we're going to be looking at a message that I've entitled Hearing, Believing, and Acting. Hearing, Believing, and Acting. In the book of Joshua, chapter 5, in the verses 13 through 15, uh, the Lord sends his messenger to Joshua uh, to speak to him. And we see in verses 13 through 15 there in Joshua 5, And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, 
a man stood opposite to him with a sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? And he said, No, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped and said to him, What does my Lord say to his servant? And the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Take your sandal off your feet or off your foot, for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. And then when you get to chapter 6, the angel speaks. The messenger speaks to Joshua, and he talks about the destruction of Jericho. In the beginning of verse 1, it said, Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and its mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go all around the city once. This, is, this you will do six days. And the seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the, servant, but the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass when they make a, a loud blast with the ram's horns, and when you have heard the sound of the trumpet, that all of the people shall shout with, great, with the great shout, but then the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up, every man straight before him. Then Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Ark of the Lord. And he said to the people, Proceed and march around the city, and let him who is armed advance before the Ark of the Lord. So it was when Joshua had spoken to the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of the ram's horns before the Lord advanced and blew the trumpet, and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. The armed men went before the priests who blew the trumpets, and the rear guard came after the ark while the priests continued blowing the trumpets. Now Joshua had commanded the people, saying, You shall not shout or make any noise with your voice, nor shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day until I, today I say to you, shout, then you shall shout. That's the biggest miracle in the whole thing, if you ask my, if you ask my opinion. He asked everybody to be completely quiet. Verse 11 said, So he had the ark of the Lord circle the city, going around it once. Then they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priest took up the the ark of the Lord, the seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually. They blew with trumpets. And the armed men went before them. But the rear guard came after the ark of the Lord while the priests continued blowing the trumpets. And the second day they marched around the city once and they returned to the camp. So they did six days. But it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and marching around the city seven times in the same manner. On that day, only they marched seven, only they marched around the city seven times. And the seventh time it happened, when the priest blew the trumpet, that Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Now the city shall be doomed by the Lord to destruction. It and all who are in it, only Rahab the harlot who shall live, she and all who are in with her in her house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. And you, by all, by all means, abstain from a cursed thing, lest you become a curse when you take the, those accursed things and make them in the camp of Israel, and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. But all the silver and gold and the vessels of bronze and iron are consecrated to the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted with the priest and blew the trumpets. And it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat 
Then the people went into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both men, women, young and old, ox and sheep and donkey, with the edge of the sword. But Joshua had said to, to the two men who had spied out the, 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 the country, go into the harlot's house, and from there bring out the woman and all that she has, as you have sworn to her. And the young men which had been spies went in and brought out Rahab, her father, her mother, her brothers, and all that she had. And they brought her out, all of her relatives, and left them outside the camp of Israel. But they burned the city, all that was in it, with fire, only the silver, the gold, and the vessels of bronze and iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. And Joshua spared Rahab the harlot, her father's household, and all that she had. So she dwells in, she dwells in Israel to this day because she hid the messengers who Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. Then Joshua charged them at that time, saying, Cursed be the man before the Lord who rises up and builds this city Jericho. He shall lay its foundation with his firstborn, with his youngest he shall set the gates. And so the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame spread throughout all of the country. A long reading, a long story. And then when you go to the New Testament, you have to, you have to read that whole story. To get to the New Testament over in, in uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 30, here's all you get, one verse. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they had encircled for seven days. You get all of that story just to get that one little sentence over in the New Testament. But what does it say to us? I believe it's talking to us about our lives, not only our personal lives, but the life of the church as well. Because we're going to suffer uh, heart heartaches and setbacks and difficulties in our lives. God's going to ask us to do things that seem like there's no way they can be done, and, but he's going, to, he's going to tell us, I want you to be faithful, I want you to do these things. And I believe if we want to see these, these mountains fall, if we want to see these, these fortresses moved out of our way, if we want to see these problems disappear, if we want to see the, the gates of hell unhinged and lay in the dirt, if we want to see pagan philosophies dismantled and in the, in, the, in the rampages of all the evil in our world today torn down, then, then we need to hear what, what God, what his word, and how it is spoken to us. We need to hear it, and we need to believe it, and we need to act in obedience. In other words, we need to learn from Joshua here and all the, the Israelites who were at the walls of Jericho. I mean, that, this story is one that you just, you just can't make up. I mean, it's one that's just totally unbelievable. God's people had crossed into the, the promised land. And when they reached this uh, strategically vital city, when they reached Jericho, we read there in verse 1 that Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. Jericho was this impenetrable city. It was locked down. They were on high alert. They, they weren't going to be attacked. They were going to be as a strong fortress. There was not going to be a victory come against them. They, they were, they, it was airtight. But the Lord comes to, to Joshua, and he says in verse 2, And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and the mighty men of, of valor. Now, I'm putting myself in Joshua's shoes for a minute. Okay, Lord, I see Jericho, but, but God, God speaks in the past tense. He said, I've given them to you. I've given you the king, and I've given you Jericho, and I've given you all the men of valor, their army, their fighting force. They're yours. But yet Joshua's on the outside looking at this city and its walls. He, he doesn't have an army to take this city on, not, not to the size that he needs. He doesn't have what he needs to take on this, this fortress. But God begins to give him details. He sends this messenger, and God tells him how he would deliver the city to Joshua and to his people. 
and he gives him details. Now, this is where we need to sort of perk up and listen. When God speaks, a lot of times he speaks with detail. We can't make it a shortcut. We've got to do exactly what God says, the way God wants us to do. I want you to march around the city six days one time. I want the trumpets blown. I want all, the, I want all this happen. That's what I want you to do. On the seventh day, I want you, I want you seven times. You, you're, going, you're going around that city seven times. Here, that's what I want you to do. I, I could just hear some of us now. I don't know why we got to wait till the last day. Well, let's just do seven times a day. You know, save ourselves them other six days. But that's not what God said do. He said, you're, you're going you're gonna to march around the city six days. Then on the seventh day, you're going to do it. You know, on this last day, you're going to do it seven more times. This time you're going to have the priest blowing the trumpets and in response to God's promise. So Joshua calls up the priest and the armed men of Israel. He brings them before him and he, he speaks to them. He tells them what the Lord has told him. In verse 8, so it was when Joshua had spoken to the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horn before the Lord advanced and blew the trumpets and the ark of the covenant followed them. He says, here's, here's, what, here's what they're going to do. And so they marched around the city. They start marching. Now, try to get that picture in your mind. They've got a fortified city, walls around it, they're strongly defended. And here they go, marching around the city like it's a parade. Now, if you stand back and look at that picture, what you would say from the outside is, why would anybody in their right mind do such a thing? That doesn't even sound plausible. I mean, it, it doesn't make any sense. But, but the only plausible expl explanation here is that they, they heard the word of the Lord spoken. This is what God said to do doesn't make any sense. Now, if I'd have drawn that plan up, or anybody here would have come to me and said, here's the plan. We're going to march around the city. Here's what we're going to do. The last day, we're going to march around it seven times. The wall's just going to fall down. And I would look at you just like you would look at me like we were crazy. Didn't make any sense. The only difference here is God has spoken, and the people believed it was true. Because if they didn't believe it was true, why are they doing it? The sad part about many in, in the church today, the church as a whole, not just this church, but the church as a whole, many people, they hear God speak, but they don't want to follow in obedience. They, they don't want to do exactly what God tells them to do. God spoke here, and they believed it. They, they said to themselves, this is true, and they acted in obedience, down to the very part where Joshua tells them all, I don't want to hear one word come out of your mouth. I don't want to hear any, any, y'all be quiet, women talking to the kids. I don't want to hear anybody. I don't want to hear the kids. I don't want to hear nobody. Nobody says a word. Nothing comes out of your mouth until I tell you shout. And then everybody's going to shout. The thing about this plan, it would have been a, a very bad plan if God hadn't given the word. But that's what God said to And so they, they listen to the words of God. If, if it had been heard by people who lacked faith, it would have never been carried out. I mean, God can speak, and a lot of people are still going to say, no, don't believe that's going to happen. Nope, not going to do that. That's too difficult, too much responsibility, too much, too much responsibility, too much, too much dedication, too much sacrifice. I, I, I can't do that. That plan doesn't sound right. Even though God said it, these people believed it, and, and that's the only way the plan worked because they believed what God told them was going to happen because Joshua heard and as men believed the message of God, they put their faith in the message of God and they responded to it in obedience. They did exactly what God told them to do. 
Now, we all know these people weren't perfect. They had proven that. But they listened this time. And that's the way we need to look many times and most of the times when God speaks to us. God often makes a promise and then issues a command that makes no sense without that promise. God says, I want you to do this. I'm going to do this for you. You, you can have this. This is going to come to pass, but here's what you've got to do. And the here's what you've got to do doesn't make any sense to us. And it scares us. And a lot of times we don't follow through on that, on that, on that plan to get the promise. And that's what we're seeing here. God had promised them. He said, here's the city. I'm giving you the king. I'm giving you their, their mighty men. The walls are going to fall flat. All that's going to happen, it's yours in the past tense. It's already happened, but here's what you have to do. And he gives the marching orders. But God always does that. I mean, you think about Scripture. He promised Noah that a flood was coming. And he, co he commanded him to, to build an ark, even though it hadn't rained, even though it was completely dry, even though he wasn't near any water. He says, Noah, the flood's coming. I promise you it's coming. I promise you I'm going to save you and your family, but you've got to build this ark to be saved. And so Noah goes to work. He promised Abram that he would give him a, a family and a land, and he commanded him to, to leave almost everything that he had and everything that he had known. You leave this, and I'm going to make you a, a father of, of more countless people than the stars. But he didn't see that. Here's what I'm going to do, but here's what you've got to do, and the doing part's tough. He promised Moses that he would rescue the people from Egypt, and he commanded him to go before the most powerful man in the land and make his case. Now, Moses says, we, we want freedom, but this sure don't make any sense, me going to Pharaoh. Makes no sense what you're asking me to do. But he did it. You see, in all of those cases, and in our case as well, faith hears the promise, it hears the command, and it believes both of them. It believes what God is promising us is going to come to pass, but it also believes... It is as crazy as it may sound to us, in our small minds, God speaks to us. He says, here's what I want you to do. Here's the command, but we believe it. And when we believe, when we hear the command, when we believe the command, when we hear the promise, when we believe the promise, then it takes an act of obedience. We have to go to work. They had to march around the city. Noah had to build an ark. Moses had to go before Pharaoh. Abram had to leave it all. But that's what God had commanded to receive the promise. You see, if we want to exercise faith on a daily basis in order that we may build our faith like a muscle, we can, we can grow it to maturity, we have to be people who abide in God's word. We have to be in God's Word. We have to read it. When we're, when we're looking for something, we're in God's Word. When there's a need in our life, we're in God's Word. We're, we're looking for answers while we're in there, but you've got to ask some questions when you get in there. I don't know if you do this or not, but you should be doing it. If you're reading God's Word, and you're, 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 trying, to, you're trying to get through a, get past a fortress in your life, you're trying to get through a, through, a, through a difficult time in your life, it seems like there's no way to get past, no way to get over, no way to get under it, you, you, you've got to be in God's Word. You've got to be asking, uh, what am I being promised? What, what's God promising me is going to happen in this situation? What's God telling me that's going to happen in this situation? And then you have to ask, what am I being commanded to do? What, what does God want me to do to see this promise come to pass? And what will obedience look like in my life? What am I going to have to do and how am I going to be obedient in doing so? You see, that happens to us each and every day. How, how is God speaking to my life? What does he want me to do? How can I be obedient?
But this kind of daily communication with the Lord through his word, it strengthens our faith, and it also produces this, this, this steadfast obedience. The more time you spend with him, your faith is strengthened and your obedience is strengthened because the more you know God, the more you know you can trust him. It's no longer a, a ledge that you jump off of. It's not. When my boys were little, and for y'all that still have little boys, and some of them have gotten Levi's even past their age at this point, I remember I'd always seen it happen. I'd always heard, always heard stories, and I'd always heard sermon illustrations of it happening. But it truly happened to me one day. We were out one day, and they were playing on this playground equipment. And it had a climb-up thing and a ledge, and, you know, you went down a slide and all this kind of stuff. And I'm just watching and making sure they're not going to, they're just, they're just little boys. I mean, they were, they were smaller than they were when we first came here. And, and David just saw that picture a while ago. Just little, just little stuff. And I was walking around watching them. Paula was on the other side. She was watching them. And I heard Noah go, Dad. And when I looked up, he was already in the air. He had just jumped. And all I did was go, whoop, and he landed right there. He knew I would catch him. He, he trusted me that much that he was willing without giving me any forewarning other than dad when he's already in midair that he was going to jump. Now, I'm telling you now, he was a good, you know, five foot off the ground, little boy. Six foot off the ground, I guess. He was above me. And he just jumped. And all, and all I did was turned around and there he was and all, I just caught him. That's what God expects out of us. God expects us when he says, here's what I want you to do, and I just want you to jump as we just jump. And we know God's going to catch us. We know he's got us because he's commanded us. He said, here's my promise. Here's what I want you to do. I'm going to see you through this. We have to be willing to, Scripture tells us, we have to be willing to be like little children sometimes when it comes to faith. We get older and we know it all. And God just wants us to be like a child, just willing to trust. The more we spend time with him, the more we strengthen our faith, the more we produce obedience so that we live out our, our Christian life, we live it out, and we persevere through trials because trials are going to come every one of us, some more than others, but they're going to come. They're going to happen. And we need to obey God simply and only because we can believe his promise to us. And just like in this passage tonight, many of you have seen it, I've seen it in my own life, and God tells us, I'll bring the walls down. The walls that are causing you trouble, the walls that are causing you pain, the walls that are causing you discomfort, I'll, I'll bring those walls down. I just want you to be faithful and trust me. Follow my word. Follow my commands to a T. And the walls will come down. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you tonight for just being able to come together and spend time in your word this evening. Father, we know that you love us and care for us, and, and Lord, we say that, but there's days we don't live like that. So, Father, I pray tonight that you would help strengthen our faith in you. And while you strengthen our faith, you'll be strengthening our obedience in whatever call you place on our life, whatever you want us to do. We know that we can trust you to catch us, to be there for us. So, Father, we pray for this assembly that's gathered here tonight. Pray for this church as a whole tonight as we pray for this kind of faith and this kind of obedience. And we pray for your blessing upon us. Father, we come now to lift up concerns of prayer for those uh, of this church and friends and family, and we bring those folks before you tonight. We pray your blessing upon them as well. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen.
for joining us this morning for worship at First Baptist Church Cantonment. We were so glad that you were with us this morning. I pray that you are blessed by the singing of songs to our Lord, but also by the opening of his word together and allowing God to speak into our lives. This morning, I pray that you receive a great blessing by that. Look forward to seeing you next time that we're together. Join us anytime at First Baptist Church Cantonment here in Cantonment, Florida. We'd be glad to see you. Look us up on our Facebook page, check out our website, and come visit with us. Again, have a great week.